universally, but I'll still argue that the best success of direct to consumer is when it's connected to everything. Mm -hmm. That when you're using it to, to focus on your entire artist career. When you isolate with one partner over here doing direct to consumer, direct to consumer, that's not connected to people who are talking to iTunes, you're leaving money on the table. Uh, if you want to get radio airplay, if that, a lot of artists still want that. They want that exposure. They know what happens. They, these artists come in and they know that when they're on the radio, that their audience live is different and bigger and singing that song is different than when it's just social media. I'm not saying one's better than the other, but a lot of artists have the perception is that they don't want that, but they do because they see it. They, they know what it's like when they have airplay and they go play live. And so I'll argue again, if your direct consumer team is not connected to your efforts to get on the radio, you're leaving money on the table. I'll give you a real world example. We had an artist who, um, we use our sales information to go to radio to try to get airplay from our direct consumer channel. Um, and we go in and we found a market where we were selling a lot of shirts for an artist in Cleveland, but we couldn't figure it out. And we looked at the traffic and the referrals, and, and some of the purchases were coming from a radio station website. And this radio station website, you publish these billboards. Sometimes, the, like, radio stations have artists that are core to the format, like Aerosmith is core to the rock format. So whether or not they're playing Aerosmith's new, sing new single, they'll kind of have Aerosmith featured on their website. So in this particular case, they had featured this artist on their website because it was a core artist, but they weren't playing the new song. So people were going to the website, clicking through to our store, buying merch, and the station wasn't playing the song. So we gave that sales information to the radio department. They went back to the, to the station and said, I know you guys don't want to add this, but I got this information. People are buying shirts from your website, and you really don't want to play the song, and they got the ad. Um, and so to me, it's about direct to consumer as a core thing that's been really well. But you have to connect that to everything else, because if you're not using that information to broaden your career, I really just think you're leaving money on the table. So, so that's our philosophy is direct to consumer is awesome. We do a great job of it. If we're going to only focus on that, that's fine. But if you want to talk about a broader picture, how do you grow your fan base? How do you use direct to consumer to reach people who just are never going to come and shop at your website? I mean, take the biggest artists in the world and look at their web traffic and take the biggest artists in the world who are the best at it, and, you, and you'll still do the math and just realize that that's still some X percentage of your total fan base. And even, let's just say if it was 70% of all your fans from the biggest artists in the world came to your website, which is a stat that's probably 10 times greater than any real case scenario, you still want to get that other 30%.